So this is an Intel Nook, and this is the Intel Nook 12 Enthusiast, also known as Serpent Canon. And what is interesting about this is that this is an Intel Nook that has the Intel Arc A770M mobile GPU. This is Intel's dedicated GPU, and this is the first time trying it out here. So this is the GPU you should be expecting in Intel laptops come next year, and this is a very good showcase. Now you guys know I've covered Nooks here on the channel, and this is one I wanted to put through its gaming paces. It doesn't say it's a gaming uh, um, Nook in any kind of formal regard, but I figured having the Intel Arc A770M, I should get some good results. But before that, let's look at the Nook itself. It's really nice and simple, uh, all black, nothing too crazy. You've got, of course, USB ports in the front. You've got a headphone jack, you've got a Thunderbolt 4, you've got an SD card reader, and you've got this power button. Vents all around, which is pretty cool, but at the back, there are more ports for you to go through. Uh, there are four USB uh, a ports, there is a 2.5 gigabit port for ethernet, another Thunderbolt port, you've got optical, you've got HDMI, and then you've got two display ports and of course the power port. Now this thing comes with a massive power brick, so that is a downside, but this thing packs a lot in terms of specs. So this Intel Nook enthusiast comes with a Core i7 12700H. So that's the kind of same processor you'll find in a gaming laptop. You've got the Intel Arc uh, A770M with 16 gigabytes of DDR6 RAM, which is pretty nice. Uh, then you've got uh, 16 gigabytes of uh, regular RAM on your device. You also got a Kingston 500 gigabyte storage, PCI, E uh, uh, four, so we've got all the things we need for this, and you can see all the specs on the screen anyway. Now, as you know, I like to game on this channel, and we wanted to put it through its paces to see what would actually get. Now, I did run a Cinebench score for those who are interested. You can find the scores up on screen, but we, we care about the A770M. What can it actually do for us? So we went ahead and, and tested it off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and we ran the benchmark test and at the highest settings, we're able to get 96 frames per second running it on a 1440p monitor. So this monitor you see on screen here is an NZXT monitor. We'll talk about that later in the video, but we ran it at the highest resolution of the monitor. It's 144 Hertz and we got 96 frames per second, which is actually pretty good. So that is just impressive for me to see, especially with Intel's first run of dedicated graphics cards. Then we move over to Doom Eternal, and Doom Eternal at uh, the highest settings there, which is Ultra Nightmare. Uh, you can drop it down low, of course. We're getting between 70 to about uh, 86 frames per second. Uh, not what I usually like. We could, could get higher, of course, if we drop it down from Ultra Nightmare to say Ultra, we're getting over 100 on that. But it was good to see, again, I could play Doom Eternal without actually dropping below 70 frames per second. So again, that was pretty solid. It and the games look good and ran pretty well. And finally, I went ahead and tried, of course, Call of, Call of Duty uh, Modern Warfare Warzone, as you know. And on Warzone, it was getting roughly around, you know, uh, 70 to, to about high 80 frames per second. Again, solid outing overall, which means at least with the system, I can get over 60 frames per second if I'm playing on a 1440p monitor. If I drop it to 1080p, I'm gonna definitely get much higher results. So what does that mean for me with this uh, device? What it means, first of all, is that the Intel Arc A770M is a solid, dedicated GPU, especially a mobile GPU, which is what we have in the system. And I'm glad to see that it actually can perform pretty well on the highest settings of a lot of games. So if you wanna get, of course, higher uh, uh, frame rates, uh, you can definitely just drop it down to say high or medium settings and you will get much better frame rates. So even just go down to 1080p in that regard. The only game we played at 1080p was of course, um, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the rest were played at 1440p. So you get the idea that this thing is a, at least a good powerhouse when it comes to gaming. And that is a good sign. It means that when we look at Intel laptops next year with 13th gen and uh, an A series dedicated GPU, we should be getting some really solid performances, but also hopefully Intel can price that quite generously. 
So I mentioned the monitor earlier, and I wanna go back to that because that is an NZXT monitor, that's the canvas. And I'm actually just throwing to this video because I use it, of course, in conjunction while testing out uh, the Intel uh, Nook enthusiast. What I like about this monitor is its price point. Currently, you can get it for 289. The bad part about it is that they sell the stand separately, but I do like the stand because it allows it to swivel left and right. You don't have to actually turn the monitor. The base actually turns and it's pretty steady. Plus, you do have the ability to tilt up and down. It does have, of course, HDMI, uh, HDMI ports, two of those, one display port, and it has a refresh rate of 165 hertz. Now, this is a 1440p monitor, one millisecond response time, also has uh, HDR10 capabilities, AMD FreeSync Premium as well. It's got anti-glare and also 100, 1,500 uh, R curved radius, which is pretty nice. Overall, this is a solid monitor and it pairs well with something like the Intel Nook. Now, I don't have pricing for this Nook because a lot of Nooks, you can get them bare bone, but if you're looking for something that actually has some graphical punch with a small footprint like this, I mean, this might be the future of like desktop gaming because you don't have to have a super big rig uh, to actually play the games you want and play them quite effectively. So I definitely like this. And I think this kind of proves that Intel is here to stay with their graphics cards, especially uh, just looking at the mobile version of the Intel Arc. I'm liking what I see. I can't wait to see it with 13 gen and also maybe with the next version of the Nook. I will be checking out a gaming Nook soon, so stay tuned for that video. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think. If you have any questions, any comments, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy entertainment.